Hi, I'm Tony. I'm the Microbiz Champion and today it's the Microbusiness Champion on Governance. What a week. This week it's uh, seven days after the e EU referendum and I should say England really because I'm not sure that Scotland and Northern Ireland are going to leave the EU but England certainly decided to leave the EU and uh, I've been doing radio interviews all week um, about what it means for micro business owners and I thought it'd be useful to actually say instead of being boring going on about that let's do something that's important for all governments around the world not to do as we do in England about micro businesses but what can you do positively to help micro business owners the 95 percent of businesses in the world to survive and thrive to start up successfully and get through those difficult three years and be able to continue onwards it was noticeable in the EU referendum that there was a Remain side and there was a Leave side of politicians and not once, not once during the whole campaign did any politician mention what leaving the EU would mean for micro business owners. That's because they didn't know. That's because they can only talk about big business. They can only talk about jobs. Yet just before the EU war referendum took place in the UK the employment figures were announced and guess what well there were record figures for employment not unemployment record figures for employment since 2005 but why because 205,000 micro business owners had started up a new business in the quarter what we have to do is create the conditions, any government has got to create the conditions for those startups to survive. It's not about promoting enterprise, the fact that, you know, we send a bus around the country so that everybody can see, you know, what a good idea it is to start up a business. Everybody knows it's a good idea to start up your own business and get you out of corporate hell. And frankly, there is no job security. Um, people want to, 70% of the people doing it want to control their own destiny and find it is the best way to earn their living starting their business. So the thing is not to be promoting enterprise overall. Everybody knows enterprise is the best way to be but it's actually to create the conditions under which somebody can start their own business and then succeed and make ends meet and 6% of them get more to start up, more to succeed and 6% of them will be employing people. That country gets all the benefits of new employees, new growth, all of the ideas, all of the innovation for that company. Look at Thailand, look at New Zealand, look at Scotland, look at Australia. Look at Canada, look at all these countries around the world that have embraced on trying to create the conditions for micro business owners to succeed. Okay, so quickly, what are the things any government can do around the world? These are all things that the UK government refuses to do. Uh, instead, it will have initiatives and all sorts of things. You know, it costs more money in television advertising to sell the initiatives than it does to use in terms of growth. So things that they can do. Firstly get cash flowing. Governments in every every country around the world is usually a big buyer of products and services. It's often a licensor of products and services that you can use like you know uh, all sorts of things to do with uh, regulations and various things so it licenses and it buys. So what can it do? Well it can say we're not going to license anybody, we're not going to license people to sell alcohol or we're not going to um, uh, license people to brew alcohol, we're not going to license people to make tobacco, we're not going to license people to uh, produce energy, we're not going to buy energy, we're not going to buy um, cannabis, we're not going to buy anything that uh, that organisation does not agree 
If that organisation does not agree to pay all their suppliers, big and small, within 30 days. The average in the UK is a disgraceful 68 days. It's not about prompt payment, it's about unfair practices from usually very large companies trying to ensure that they say 60 day minimum terms, 75 day minimum terms. The thing that will keep microbism Biz owners going more than anything else is not having to take out loans, use their credit cards, it's being able to get paid as quickly as possible. So every government, number one, can say we're not going to be supplied by any organisation that won't pay all of its supplies within 30 days. Secondly, reduce the costs. There's two main costs here, so that's two and three. The first cost is infrastructure costs. You know, there's a lot of talk about advice and providing support and providing training. Look, starting running your own business is a learning by doing business. Yeah, get help from a business owner. Do something that you know something about, but you will make mistakes. It's all about learning by doing. But if your costs are low, if you're not tied into too many things, then it will make so much difference. So in Malta, for example, which is very micro-business owner friendly, the government got in there by reducing energy costs by 25%. So it's about reducing those telecommunications costs, those public transport costs, all the things. Remember, 50-60% of people in every country now are starting their own business from home. So just think of the costs of your household as the things that need Need to actually reduce in order for you to have more money to spend on the important things winning keeping customers and the third thing I will say is about costs and I want to make that point for any government around the world and it's about costs of red tape I've been involved 20 years as a micro-business champion trying to promote better life for micro-business owners around the world and especially in England where I live and the most I've heard every single year from politicians, we're going to have a bonfire of the regulations. Do we? Never. And the reason is that the regulations are uh, difficult to unpick. They're what they do. They may take away some regulations and they replace it with others. Our English government, for example, has got the idea of actually uh, introducing quarterly tax assessments online, which allows them to do stealth taxes and all sorts of taxes in the future by people being taxed uh, four, times a year, four times a year in effect by their assessment. So, how do you actually reduce the regulatory burden on micro businesses? Well, look at India. What India has done, it's actually made sure by methods of self certification or uh, not paying any tax in the first three years, those first vulnerable three years, um, incentives to uh, take on employees. Um, so you're not involved in auto enrolment and all those terrible things that, that uh, take up your time and put you off taking an on, on employee. So it's about making sure that you exempt new businesses because it's the new businesses that all the growth comes from it's the new businesses that all the jobs come from it's the new businesses that all the innovation comes from it's the new businesses that all your country's growth comes from exempt them from regulations, use self-certification if you can, as many as you can for the first three years of their business. Give them a fair chance to get going, get, get running. That's my advice as the micro-business champion, three things that you can do to help governments around the world.